The Buffalo Common Council is hosting its first ever winter preparedness fair series ahead of Western New York's snowy season. Right now we are joined by Council Member Mitch Nowakowski to tell us all about it. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. You too. Thanks for having me. So winter preparedness. Why is this so important? Well, as you know, the Common Council has really been on the forefront after the blizzard and making sure not only the municipality is uh, prepared, but also our constituents. So we're finally having events that to make sure that our constituents are also prepared too, because we know that with health and safety, if we have their proper equipment and other policies on the city side, but also um, our communication to our constituents is clear, they'll be better prepared to face emergencies. So we've teamed up with a lot of vendors, 211, social services, national grid, national fuel these very important entities to come in and to make sure that our constituents are prepared moving forward um, but also to have proper materials um, as well so it's kind of a shopping function where they can build their own bag so tell me why a series why was this something that the common council wanted to put together yeah we really needed to make sure that we were also uh, touching everybody uh, location wise so there's one at the central library which is connected co completely to public transit we have the bell center we have north and south buffalo so we really wanted to make sure that we were geographically representing um, the whole city to make sure that even walkers can come to those locations. Um, so to build in a series and build in a narrative um, and have a larger splash, we're able to get more support and also uh, provide more materials to more people. And you tell me, you know, throughout the series, you'll, the vendors will be going through a number of things. One of them include emergency kits. Why are those so important? What should those comprise of? That's a really good question because we had a lot of folks that after the blizzard um, did not have the proper equipment and they were left without powers for over five days. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that there's not only enough blankets, but also um, flashlights and things that can really keep you alive and safe for a duration of days. Because I think we can all agree that our weather is becoming more erratic. And so we need to be prepared no matter what situation comes. And last winter season was a good example of that between the November storm and of course the deadly blizzard. And a big part of this series as well is the focus on community engagement. Why is that relationship between neighbors, the Common Council, city officials and vendors like all the ones you mentioned, why is that connection so important? I think when you really look at it from the totality of it and of people coming together, let's look at it from the lens of somebody that's living with a disability or are hard of hearing and or deaf. So when you have emergency response to not know your neighbor won't hear the knock at the door or you have people that um, are seniors that don't have access to information or use social media. Um, we know that the only way we're gonna get a prepared citizenry is really by boots on the ground and bringing people together in real time um, to make sure that we really fit in all those gaps um, no matter where they may be. What were some of the concerns the Common Council heard since, I mean, I'm sure you've heard them over the years. We know how Western New York winters are, but really since last season. Access to food, heat, and electricity were the biggest um, that we heard because, you know, you really realize when you go through a public emergency how vulnerable most people really are living. They really are living check to check. Um, they really may not have enough groceries to hold them over. Um, and when you are cutting off um, or they don't have the ability for um, electricity, people are on ventilators. They need it for their prescriptions. I mean, you really realize uh, it takes a village when it comes to emergency response. So yes, the city has taken, um, you know, the bull by the horns by making sure we have cost sharing equipment and making sure that we're up to date on our policies. But we also need that uh, need to know that our community also needs to be prepared for themselves too. And talking about that access, you know, the vendors that will be there, there'll be a number of them. Are you, you're still looking for vendors, right? Yeah, if you believe that you have a space in emergency response and you'd like to come, please do, um, because uh, tackling this response is so diverse. It's more than just uh, food, water, and shelter. I mean, it's making sure that we can get people access to hospitals, and it's really expansive, and it's going to need everyone to make sure that we're prepared. And before we let you go, we have the dates right there on the screen. There is a number of times, locations. When is the first one? The first one is November 2nd. Wonderful. We, of course, will make sure we have all of this information up on our website, WIVB.com. This is really important. We know winter will be here before we know it, unfortunately. Councilmember Mitch Nowakowski, thank you so much for coming in and sharing the details with us. Thank you.